Jonah 1. And the word of Hashem came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against her, for their wickedness has ascended before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from before Hashem. He went down to Jaffa and found a ship bound for Tarshish. He paid its fare and boarded it to travel with them to Tarshish from before Hashem. Then Hashem cast a mighty wind toward the sea. There was a great tempest in the sea and the ship threatened to be broken. The sailors became frightened and they cried out each to his God. They cast the wares that were on the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had descended to the ship's holds, and he lay down and fell fast asleep. The ship's master approached him and said to him, How can you sleep so soundly? Arise, call to your God. Perhaps God will think of us, and we will not perish. Then they said one to another, Come, let us cast lots that we may determine because of whom this calamity is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us now, because of whom has this evil befallen us? What is your trade, and from where do you come? What is your land, and of what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear Hashem, the God of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. The men were frightened with great fear, and they said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that it was from before Hashem that he was fleeing, for he had told them, They said to him, What must we do to you so that the sea will subside from upon us? For the sea grows stormier. He said to them, Pick me up and heave me into the sea, and the sea will calm down from upon you. For I know that it is because of me that this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to shore, but they could not, because the sea was growing stormier upon them. They called out to Hashem and said, Please, Hashem, let us not perish now on account of this man's soul, and do not reckon it against us as innocent blood. For you, Hashem, as you wished, so have you done. So they lifted Jonah and heaved him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Then the men felt a great fear for Hashem. They slaughtered a sacrifice to Hashem and took vows. Jonah 2 Hashem designated a large fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah remained in the fish's innards for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to Hashem, his God, from the fish's innards, and said, I called in my distress to Hashem, and he answered me. From the belly of the grave I cried out. You heard my voice. You cast me into the depth of the heart of the seas. The river surrounded me. All your breakers and all your waves passed over me. Then I said to myself, I was driven from before your eyes, but I will again gaze at your holy temple. Waters encompass me to the soul. The deep world around me. Reeds were tangled about my head. I descended to the bases of the mountains. The earth, its bars were closed against me forever. Yet... You lifted my life from the pit, O Hashem, my God. When my soul was faint within me, I remembered Hashem. My prayer came to you, to your holy temple. They watch false vanities. They forsake their kindness. And as for me, with a voice of thanksgiving, I will make sacrifices to you. What I have vowed, I will fulfill for the salvation that is Hashem's. Then... Hashem addressed the fish, and it spewed out Jonah onto dry land. Jonah 3. The word of Hashem came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against her the proclamation that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh in accordance with God's word. Now, Nineveh was an enormously great city, a three-day journey. Jonah commenced to enter the city, a distance of one day's journey. Then he called out and said, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overturned. The people of Nineveh believed in God, so they proclaimed a fast and donned sackcloth, from their great to their small. 
The matter reached the king of Nineveh. He rose from his throne, removed his robe from upon himself, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat on the ashes. And he had it promulgated and declared in Nineveh by the counsel of the king and his nobles, saying, The man and the animal, the herd and the flock shall not taste anything. They shall neither graze nor drink water. Both man and animal shall cover themselves with sackcloth. And they shall call out mightily to God. Every man shall turn back from his evil way and from the robbery that is in their hands. He who knows shall repent, and God will relent. And he will turn away from his burning wrath, so that we not perish. And God saw their deeds, that they repented from their evil way. And God relented concerning the evil he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Jonah 4 And it displeased Jonah greatly, and angered him. He prayed to Hashem and said, Please, Hashem, was this not my contention when I was still on my own soil? Because of this, I had hastened to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and relent from doing harm. So now, Hashem, please, take my soul from me, for better is my death than my life. And Hashem said, are you so deeply grieved? Jonah left the city and sat at the east of the city. He made himself a booth there and sat under it in the shade until he would see what would occur in the city. Hashem, God, designated a kikayo, which rose up above Jonah to form a shade over his head to relieve him from his discomfort. Jonah rejoiced over the kikayo, a great joy. Then God designated a worm at the dawn of the next day, and it attacked the Kikayon so that it withered. And it was when the sun shone that God designated a stifling east wind. The sun beat upon Jonah's head and he felt faint. He asked for his soul's death and said, Better is my death than my life. And God said to Jonah, Are you so deeply grieved over the Kikayon? And he said, I am greatly grieved to death. Hashem said, you took pity on the Kikayon for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow. It lived one night and perished after one night. And I, shall I not take pity upon Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and many animals as well? Hello, welcome back. This is episode 226. And we are reading the book of Jonah. The style of this book is a departure from the prophecies we've read up to this point. It's more of a narrative. Nineveh is this humongous, ginormous city like L.A. or Houston. It would definitely not be anything like Clovis, New Mexico, or Port Arthur, Texas. It was, however, an evil town for the following reasons. Number one, its leaders were filthy, lying politicians. Number two, its people were totally greedy and self-absorbed. Number three, the poor were oppressed and totally hated. And finally, number four, nobody cared about the orphans or the widows. So God tells Jonah to go to a place like this and accuse them and rebuke them. Of course, he runs away. But what does it mean that God stops Jonah from running away? What is Nineveh to God that he would send Jonah there to get them to repent? What is the message God is sending here? These other prophets are talking about destruction and your babies being crushed. Jonah's talking about going to the city of your enemies and preaching about repentance. This looks like a lot of courage to me. But to Jonah, it must have looked like suicide because this guy is literally paying to flee. <laughs> well, you know, the sailors, they struggle with throwing this guy off into the sea because that's insane. And, you know, they feel like maybe they're guilty of murder and... Okay, so the fish swallows this guy up. Who knows? Three days, three nights. He's in the fish. Finally, he says, oh, got it. My brain is clear now that I'm basically dead. Well, Jonah himself gets a second shot. He gets vomited up on the beach by this fish. He goes to the town. Okay, he walks through the gate. Number one, either these people know who Jonah is and they say, man, this guy, 
we need to listen to him. Or B, maybe like God had been working on their minds in anticipation of Jonah arriving. Maybe he said a handful of words that was exactly what they needed to hear. Somehow, this thing gets all the way up to the top. Now, the story is that the entire town repents, shifts its gears, and worships the name of the Lord. This is an unbelievably remarkable and amazing thing. Jonah is so angry, he storms out and throws a little bit of a hissy fit. He and God have a bit of a conversation. He's like, you know what, God? I knew you were going to do this, but those guys are jerks and scumbags and they killed my neighbor and I don't want them to be saved. So God asks Jonah, Jonah, what's the story here, man? I have suffered for those babies. They don't have the slightest clue what's going on. I want to save them. Jonah weeps because this plant that had grown and provided him with shade, it withers away and he's worried about it. But the humans, he's not worried about. I would call the ending of this book a bit abrupt, but it is a fascinating story. So what is the message? I don't know if it has a lot to do with fish or plants or really maybe even Nineveh, but I do think that it highlights some very unique human characteristics. First of all, I think we as humans interfere greatly with God's idea of how things should be based on what we think things should be. (laughs) And I don't think the history shows that that works out really well for us. Maybe this book of Jonah is sort of highlighting this tendency of ours and possibly subtly encouraging us to maybe just sort of go along with God's plan instead of fighting him on it. Thank you for listening. There are several books left, but we are almost done. The NQE is out.